Here. Here. Perfect. Here. Also. Here. Jose. Excuse. Sevendusky. Here. Excuse. Schneider. Here. Steele. Here. Chester. Here. Wolf. Here. Everybody's here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> Item 1-4, I would uh, look for a motion to approve the minutes of the October 3rd meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Uh, public forum. We have one gentleman who wants to come to speak with us, Henry Nelson. We've got three minutes. All righty. Are we on? Uh, hello, I'm Henry Nelson. I reside at 1926 Settlement Trail here in Sheboygan. <clears throat> I just wanted to take this opportunity to compliment the uh, Common Council on their uh, <clears throat> uh, thoughtful input, the hard work that they've uh, done uh, towards a strategic plan, a, a five-year strategic plan is always a good thing. We try and do that in every organization, um, <clears throat> particularly like the uh, the uh, mission statement, the vision statement, and the fact that uh, that you're going to be breaking down the uh, goals and objectives, uh, you know, year by year for a five-year basis. Uh, I trust that all the uh, involved stakeholders were involved. I'm sure they were, and as I say, a lot of thoughtful discussion must have gone into it. Uh, so, uh, at this point, that's all I wanted to do is just compliment you on all your hard work and uh, um, hope it passes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That was very nice. Thank you. Uh, anybody else that would like to speak to the Committee of the Hall? Seeing none, we're going to go to item 1 2, resolution 144 16 17 by our older person Donahue, a resolution adopting the City of Sheboygan 2017. 2021 strategic plan. Presentation. Uh, yeah, please, we have a presenta presentation. Presentation. Uh, we do have a PowerPoint presentation tonight uh, to help. Uh, so please, uh, please follow along. Uh, what is a strategic plan? Uh, it's a long-term vision. Uh, which sets up goals and objectives in a systematic, incremental manner. Uh, it really looks at what's going on today, where, in this case, the city wants to be, and what steps we're going to take to get there. All in all, it's a proactive effort instead of simply being reactive to what comes in or out, day in or day out. Uh, why do we need a strategic plan? Uh, we're looking for results. We're looking for a realistic, workable framework to build a foundation, again, for continual improvement of the city. Uh, for the, your department heads, it's an invaluable management tool. It assists us in, in organizing our, our resources and ultimately in our recommendations to you, whether it be a five-year cap improvement or annual operating budget. Strategic planning should be responsive to a citizen's needs. A plan includes priorities that are important to those citizens. Strategic planning narrows the communication gap. Uh, as, as most of you who participated, uh, not only in the retreat with your management team, uh, those of you that may have participated in the uh, community survey as individuals, maybe with your families, for those of you that participated in the open house, as well as um, have participated in some of the meetings like st strategic fiscal planning. It's all about creating dialogue. The strategic plan, as you know, is not only goals, uh, but also objectives. And last but not least, the city attempts to put together at least uh, action plans for the first two years. So again, it's custom tailored uh, for each individual department. Adaptability. Uh, again, this is a plan. Uh, we know that things come up. Uh, we know that um, priorities that you may have in 12 months may be different than what we uh, have talked about uh, this past uh, summer. So, so again, um, 
this is something that uh, we need to continue to to think about and again staff recognizes that this is something that is flexible based upon you know your needs as you are responding to citizens concerns accountability uh, clearly we have limited resources uh, really the the one of the primary goals of the strategic plan is to recognize that with those res uh, restrictions as far as fiscal uh, inputs our, uh, our cash uh, our taxes uh, our user fees that by having a plan we're able to uh, again prioritize how best to use those those dollars those limited dollars uh, how do how did we get from here uh, how did we get here uh, again uh, in the past the city has had an informal strategic plan uh, it's been somewhat rudimentary rudimentary in that it's been a, a your, your five-year capital improvement plan that's really been sort of your strategic plan and again I know there's been a lot of focus in the past on that first year uh, especially as the city uh, gears up for the next uh, annual budget uh, but that that really should be uh, an end to a means and the means really is your strategic planning that's your, your broader picture and uh, sort of a subset or really an action uh, is, 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 your, is taking action on your five-year capital improvement planning process. Um, there's sort of nuggets of the strategic planning that started uh, uh, almost two years ago, January 2015. Uh, city management team members met uh, to revise the city's mission and vision statement as well as develop core values. We're going to talk a little bit later about those core values. Uh, Common Council adopted those mission and vision statements in March of 2015. Uh, the mission statement uh, is up above. Again, you've probably read it many times. It's City of Sheboygan is dedicated to providing residents, the business community, and visitors with fiscally respons responsible municipal services in an effective and responsive manner to meet the needs of our diverse community. Uh, the vision <coughs> statement is the City of Sheboygan will be a family-oriented and prosperous community with a wide variety of housing, business, cultural, and recreational opportunities in safe and attractive neighborhoods. Six core values, respect, accountability, teamwork, innovation, fiscal responsibility, and service. Again, this is what is asked of our employees as well as what's expected from elected officials. This past summer, uh, we really kicked off uh, efforts to begin developing a strategic plan uh, as a more comprehensive effort. Uh, started off in July with a community survey. Uh, again, we had, uh, I think, overall very positive uh, comments from citizens. Again, I would have liked to have seen a, a higher participation rate. Um, if we were to summarize the, the type of person that responded to that survey, it was a female homeowner who had lived in the city for more than 25 years. All, as I mentioned, all in all, uh, the citizen who responded to the survey, 74% said the quality of life in Sheboygan was good or excellent. The best thing uh, residents like about the community is, being, is Lake Michigan. Uh, this survey results uh, were used as part of a retreat that was held in August um, at Maywood. Uh, as part of that, uh, we identified uh, several priorities uh, that ultimately would be used by staff to develop uh, a draft for the strategic plan. The hope is that annually the community survey uh, will be uh, conducted in July, uh, most likely not a comprehensive survey like this past year. Uh, the second, third, and fourth year will probably be uh, more of a condensed, more of a review of services and review of, of departments, uh, but every no long no more than every five years a, a comprehensive survey will be conducted. Outcome of the retreat: uh, six strategic focus areas: quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, uh, and communication. Uh, this document, uh, I think you've all received copies of it. Uh, it was on our website. Um, again, my hat's off to uh, Department of Planning and Development. Um, they've done a, 
a good job of laying this out. Uh, again, this stuff can be kind of dry to read, but I think, again, based upon the, the format, I think it, uh, it tracks very well, and, I, and ultimately it's, it's a fast read. In addition to the strategic goals, uh, there are strategies uh, that are identified as, as objectives. In addition to those objectives, we sort of this, the plan gives staff and hopefully you as a council a head start in identifying uh, specific action items for 2017 and 2018. So that's those, in essence, three elements, the, the goals, the objectives, and the action items. Those are really the, the key elements of the strategic plan, and that ultimately that's what we're hoping for the Common Council to approve. The critical measures are really performance measurements or benchmark measurements, um, and that's a way for staff to be, to be able to track Hopefully for, for you, it's to, hold, it's to hold us accountable that we are making progress in uh, meeting some of those objectives or specific action items. Uh, we, uh, my department itself, itself um, with the new budget analyst that was position that was approved, will be using that position to work with the management team and track uh, and give updates at least uh, twice a year. Uh, I want to go back a little bit to mention that we had approximately 50 people attend the open house that was held just a couple weeks ago. Uh, we did ask uh, for uh, input through co comment cards if people uh, wanted, in addition to talking with you or management team members that were present. Uh, we had uh, probably a, a little close to a dozen comments, uh, and I think Chad uh, put together a summary of those just to quickly go through some of the bullets. Uh, more affordable housing options, continue to support the library, uh, more diversity in our presentation of information, uh, not just English but Spanish and Hmong, um, collaborate more with our nonprofits or foundations, uh, update our wayfinding signs to be more inclusive, uh, more promotion of the city's brand, uh, review our parking meters uh, in the downtown uh, and recognize how it may affect uh, downtown businesses, uh, modify mass transportation to appeal to younger people, and then there was comment about uh, our, our, in essence, our park and recreation uh, effort, specifically tennis courts. How will the plan be used? Um, again, once adopted, uh, we will begin to put into place already for 2017 uh, many of the action items. Uh, it will be used again uh, as additional source of information as staff begins already in another probably eight weeks uh, on updating the five-year uh, capital improvement plan. Uh, so it will be helpful for, for management team. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, I will be reporting back to you uh, twice a year on, on progress for the, the action items. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, for budgeting purposes, uh, this will be, again, a, a blueprint uh, that the city will use, city staff will use, uh, recognizing what we do have limited resources. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to, uh, through the chairman, open it up to any questions that you may have that maybe I can uh, provide, an, provide an answer. If not, we do have management team members here. Uh, does anybody have any questions of the administrator? Yeah. Uh, I guess I, I have one. When you're looking at the plan, what's the overall effect as far as what the, what's, what's the plan going to cost our citizens? Is, is you know, we want to increase the quality of our life, but, it, but at what cost? Is, is there a dollar figure put, is that ever going to come to us other than just at budget time? Yeah, uh, I guess to, uh, to answer your question, um, and so the most clear, clearest way is there's zero cost associated with a strategic plan because it is simply a plan that you have many opportunities along the way to take action. To, uh, you will be voting on it. So you still remain in control uh, of the purse strings per se. Uh, and again, ultimately you do five-year cap improvement planning uh, but the rubber hits the road every year when you approve the budget and ultimately approve contracts. For those. Uh, and again, with the largest ticket items typically being your 
your construction, your capital improvement projects. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I would just like to say I would love to see more participation from the citizens. I think that's vital and anything we can do to keep increasing awareness of that. I think given our time frame, we did a good job this year, but hopefully we get more input. It's right. pretty valuable information. Uh, seeing uh, no other discussion, um, we need to adopt. We need a motion to send this to council. Oh, Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Chair. I'd make a motion to uh, recommend this to council. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, I want to say let's do an aye, huh? Or do you want to? Well, well, we'll take a roll call vote. I guess we're required. Ballinger. Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, item 2 2 is discussion for uh, discussion of fire, Sheboygan Fire Department master plan. Uh, Chief? Chase? Okay, one of the things that, that uh, I saw this was on the agenda for public protection and safety, and then in thinking and in trying to increase the amount of communication that we have amongst our aldermen, and you get to see what's at public protection and safety because not everybody can, can make that meeting. Um, so I want to ask the Chief to do it again. Thanks. Sure. All right, thank you, first of all, for letting me speak on, on behalf of our department and myself. I was directed by uh, city leadership and council leadership to come up with a plan for the Milwaukee Fire Department for the future of our department. And I have done so. I'm sorry, did I say Milwaukee? <laughs> I apologize. 33, 30 plus years, I can't get it out of my head. <coughs> so, um, and I have done that. And I, I try to keep it simple, and I try to stick to the most important things. Everyone in the council has received two documents, one about maybe a month ago, and I sent one out last week, I believe Friday. Right. Um, that new one I sent you, I did it for two reasons. Number one, to reinforce you know, the documents that I'm gonna be talking about tonight, but also number two, there were two changes to that second set of documents I sent to you. So those are the two reasons, and I'll cover those changes as I go on. Um, I call the proposal Fire 2020. It's a three-year plan, and a lot of people say, you know what, you need a longer, it should be 10 years, 15, 25 years, but we need a lot of things done sooner than later. So I came up with this three-year plan, which I believe when January 1st of 2020 hits, hence the title, Fire 2020, will be set up, our department, in my opinion, based on my proposal, will be set up to go forward in the future, long-term in the Sheboygan, city of Sheboygan and the fire department. Um, the three-year uh, plan, I'm not going to read all of this, I'm just going to hit the high points, but the three-year plan uh, impact is, number one, it, I, it outlines a three-year plan, develops foundation for the department's future. Two, it ensures citizens of continued high-level fire services. Three, it provides services to cover city expansion and growth. And four, it maximizes the efficiency, productivity, and safety of current and future uh, SFD members. We in the fire department here in Sheboygan have encountered some cuts just like everyone else. Um, our staffing has been reduced and we're being more efficient with what we have. Um, but at the same time, we've added services such as the paramedic service and transport services. Uh, the net cost is uh, lower today than it was in 2007 and our per capita costs are lower today than they were in 2007. Our ambulance service to date has raised over $8 million in revenue. And that's a conservative estimate. So I think we're doing fantastic. I, you know, I don't know how we can do any better than we are now, but I need to look at the future. And I have to keep that same thing going into the future all the time for our citizens. And that's my goal. All right. Let's start with, uh, I have four areas, number of stations, fire station location, uh, response times, and staffing. Number of stations. In my opinion, based on my research and the research of my staff, the best option now 
and into the future is to remain at five fire stations. There was a lot of talk about condensing from five to four, five to three. Since then, there's been other research, there's been studies done, there's documented scientific evidence, not my opinion, scientific evidence that with uh, staying at five stations will reduce our response time and in, in the fire service for EMS and fire and any other emergency services, it's critical uh, that our response time be kept to the minimum. That's our strength here, and I keep saying that, but it's true. I can't get around that. The sooner we get somewhere, the better the results. The better the results, whether it's EMS or fire. So it's our opinion that we stay at five stations. Fire station location. People did their homework in the past. Excellent job. Our stations, in my opinion, are located very, very well. They're strategically placed. Um, even, even into the future, downtown areas exploding with um, uh, building construction, residential. Um, we're going to have more people in the city. Um, we have a station right downtown. It's our busiest station. The paramedic unit that's down there is also our busiest paramedic unit. It's perfectly situated. Our response times in that area are just, they're minimal. They're minimal. So I know there was a plan to uh, go to four stations we looked at, and I, Appendix A talks about the number of stations. And in that, it shows going from five to four. And it shows two dark circles, those are the existing stations, and a firehouse in yellow right in between. That's in Appendix A. If you notice, though, in that map, there are red areas. If we go, if we go to four stations, there's two areas in the city that are going to be adversely affected. Number one, downtown where the most people are going to be and where the most activity is. Number two is the near south side. And in my opinion, as chief, I don't, that can't be tolerated. I need to try to make that the same all over the city. Everybody gets the best service, the quickest response times possible. Location, I already mentioned, I think our stations are situated very well. We have a station nor far north, we have a station far south, and we have a station on the west side for any expansion basically around the city whatever we purchase or buy or acquire. So we're ready there. And we have a station downtown where we stand to gain the most population and it's the highest risk area for our city. Response times, number three. The faster the department arrives on scene, the more positive the results. The third area response time is directly related to the first two, the number of stations and the fire stations locations. If we stay where we are, are, we will respond faster and better than if we went to four or three or whatever we can do. Um, response times uh, in, in Appendix C, um, I have a chart that talks about the two departments that are directly above us in population in the state and the two departments directly below us in population in the state. And there's a comparison chart for everything. There was a change I made to that chart. I added the bottom line, which shows the command staff levels of all the departments. I originally had that in my um, original um, document, and for to keep it simplistic and to stick to the topic, I had that removed. I had my administrative assistant remove it. But for this purpose, I wanted to add it back in to show you that discrepancy there. Staffing, this is the big one. Staffing, I believe that with the increase in building construction, population and the things going on in the city in the near and distant future that we need to increase our staffing levels in the city of Sheboygan Fire. First and foremost, starting next year, January 1st, we're going to get our, the three people back that we were not allowed to hire in, in this year in 16. And that's going to help us tremendously. Right now we're starting every day at 21 instead of 22. So we're going to go back to 22. There will be a reduction in overtime and um, we'll have more people in the field available to staff our department. I'm also asking, there'll be no increase in the TO because we're just getting those positions that were already budgeted for and already in the TO, we're just getting them back. I'm asking for one more battalion chief because I want to create um, a position for EMS and I want a dedicated person for inspections. The state of Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin requires us to 
focus on inspections. They make a minimum amount of inspections. They pay us, I think last year was $103,000 for that purpose. And when I talk to them, they're always asking me, you know, who's, who's in charge? And I'm in charge ultimately. The buck stops here. But I have a deputy chief doing probably 40% of his workload, and I have a battalion chief doing 60% of their workload just on building inspections and that whole program that's involved with that. And I want that dedicated to a person. So that's why I'm asking for that staffing TO increase in 17. In 18, I'm asking for three more firefighters, another battalion chief, and I want to raise the daily minimums from 16 to 17, and that's big. That's huge. We'll have another person in the field every day minimum responding to alarms. The NFPA standard that we follow right now is based on a 2,000 square foot home with no basement, you know, uh, two story, no exposures, the bare minimum. That's the bare minimum that the national standard addresses. And we are just at that. We're just at that. And we have high rises, we have apartment buildings, we have industrial, we have, you know, box stores, we have all these other things that require a lot more people. Um, a high rise requires 42. I'm supposed, we're supposed to have 42 people at a high rise fire in eight minutes. It, that can't be done. Can't be done. We have things in place to get them there, but we'll not, we won't get them there in eight minutes. But we're, gonna, we're doing the best we can with Mavis and with some mutual agree, aid agreements that we have with other adjoining communities. So we're going to raise the daily minimum to, uh, from 16 to 17. And at that point, when I get that second chief, I'm going to put the battalion chiefs back in shift on a 24-hour shift. So that'll be another full-time body all the time. No more acting on weekends. That person can be dedicated to the shifts, and that'll increase accountability, and it'll increase quality, and it'll, it'll increase safety. Just like that, by doing that. Then at 18, I'm asking for three more firefighters, and I want to raise the daily minimums from 17 to 18. When I do this, Station 4 will operate with a minimum of three firefighters a day, not two, but three minimum. And Station 5 on the south side will operate with a minimum of three firefighters a day, not two. I don't believe that two firefighters in an outlying station like 4 and 5 are enough, personally. That's my personal opinion. Um, so then there will be a maximum staffing of uh, 18, and we'll, raise, we'll go to 24 members working per day, which will be a lot better with vacations and sick leaves and extended leaves and things like that. So... Overall, it's the budget part of it. Um, I believe that this plan um, addresses all of those issues and concerns now and in, into the future. And believe it or not, I believe that it's, it's fiscally responsible also. I really do. We're not asking, I'm not asking for the world. We're not asking for the world. I'm trying to address the issues that we need addressed as soon as we can, hence the three-year plan instead of a 10-year plan or a 15-year plan but I believe that what I've proposed will take us far into the future for the city of Sheboygan. The main reason I'm here is to answer any questions that you might have, so if you have them, please ask me and I'll uh, do the best that I can do to answer them for you. Thank you, Chief. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I noticed on your uh, fire 2020 topics, four major topics were station number station location, response time, staffing. One thing I think you should have also added to that, working in conjunction with the, with the finance department, is enhancing the ambulance collections. That's a big one. That's a $3 million business for the city. Mm -hmm. And we have not lived up to our uh, expectations that we were lead to believe eight years ago when we got into the ambulance service. The, the paramedics obviously are providing an excellent service the problem has always been collections, and I would like to see you make that part of your 2020 plan is to work on uh, better ways to work with the patient mix that you have to maximize your collections. Uh, another concern that I have, first of all, I think that you and your management team 
and uh, Mr. Longmiller's members of, of the union are doing an outstanding job, there's no question. But you've been doing an excellent job, both management and, and the paramedics and the firefighters, with the staff that you have. I mean, your community ratings were one of the highest in the survey, and you're doing that with the staff that you have right now. Uh, last year, when, when the decision was made, I guess by Mr. Amodio, to not replace three of those people that were, that were retiring, supposedly the sky was going to fall. Well, to my knowledge, it hasn't fallen. It hasn't, the sky hasn't fallen, and you're still doing an excellent job with your current staffing. One of the, one of the, one of the suggestions I got from <clears throat> Mr. Longmiller's prede, uh, predecessor, former union president, Mr. Ensley, mentioned that, and, and I think uh, Mr. Longmiller in his report made an excellent suggestion that it is a problem with only two people showing up at the same time that you really need three there to go in and do the kind of stuff you have to do. Well, Mr. Ensley made the recommendation that I believe it's the battalion chiefs, uh, go, I think it was the battalion chiefs or the shift commanders, go out on a lot more calls than they were, than they were. and he had some statistics last year that, frankly, if they were two, were quite shocking, that too many times two people were only arriving on the scene and they had to wait for the second union, the second unit. So uh, that's something, if you haven't implemented this year, I think you should also implement that I think the ultimate priority of the, of, the, of the department is to see, to have as many people on the scene as you can, and if there's some administrative duties that they can carry on with radios that when they're on the scene, I think they should be going on more calls to get the three people there. Uh, with the battalion, with, with, the, uh, with the new staff person, management person that you want to hire the first of the year, uh, getting that hundred and, uh, it's, it used to be 90,000 and now it's up to over 100,000 you mentioned with the fire inspections. You've been doing that with this, you, you've been doing that with your management team that you already have and this person that you want to hire is going to be all in about $125,000 according to your, uh, your, uh, <coughs> your information here. So I guess what I guess the point I wanted to make is the hundred and three or four thousand that we're getting is kind of free and clear. Now we're gonna take a, a, we're gonna hire a new person, a new management person, and that's gonna take all of that hundred and three or four thousand plus another uh, twenty one thousand if my math math is correct. So my concern is where's all this money gonna come from? You know, you got to wrap. With, we only have so many dollars. Is, uh, you know, are we going to rob Peter to pay Paul as we add all these people over the years? And it's several hundred thousand dollars that we're going to be adding to the uh, to the uh, fire department budget. So I guess those are my those are my concerns. Would you? I mean, I can't. If you'd like, I can speak to you afterwards. If you want me to, or if you want me to address those one at a time, or I can do whatever you would like. I guess the rest of the council should probably hear your answers. Um, I believe that this is fiscally responsible. I believe that it takes us into the future. I, I, you're right, and it's amazing. The things that we do with what the staff that we have can't be um, can't be equal anywhere. And I, you know, and I we talk. I, you know, I don't care where you go or who I talk to or whatever. No matter where I'm at, and I talk about because I'm, I'm always looking for ideas too. I'm out there looking for, you know, consolidations, you know, shared this, doing that. How, what do you do? How do you do it? But every single department is very unique in, on, in and to itself. We're all unique. You know, we're the only full-paid department in the whole county. We're surrounded by 24 volunteer departments with Lake Michigan on our east. That affects us tremendously and prevents us from doing a lot of the things that other people like the suburbs in Milwaukee that are surrounded by full paid departments can do. We can't do that here. Um, we are doing what we, what you said, and we are, we're just, but we're just making it. The staff, the firefighters, they're dedicated. You know, they do what they need to do. They take on other responsibilities, but that can only go on for so long. Um, I was, and I, I, talk to people, I say this, the same analogy. I feel like the little Dutch boy. I feel like I got a big dam in front of me with a bunch of water on the other side, and these little holes keep popping open. And I keep sticking my fingers in them, and in my toes, and I got, I got things all over. But eventually, it's going to break. We're doing everything we can 
to do to provide the best service we can. But I know as a manager, with my experience and my education, that that can't go on forever. We need more people, especially in command. I need more people. I'm just telling you, I, just, I know that that's a fact, and I can prove it. And it's a financial benefit, and it's a safety benefit for the citizens, my department, everyone. Now and way into the future, it, it is. It is. So I believe that these things are needed, and I believe that it's worth the, you know, the money. The other change I had, if you look on that spreadsheet for Appendix D, three firefighters, I had 300,000. That's not accurate. A new firefighter is 72.5 or something with benefits. So I corrected those figures for three back to, I believe it's 218,000, not 300,000. So there's a change there also. All right? So, you know, it, we are, it's, I don't know how it got done. In 2017, we had more staff than we have now, and we added the ambulance service and made, we have higher requirements and higher standards for all of the firefighters, especially paramedic. Four, we have almost 40 people in our department now that are paramedics. Do you know how unbelievable that is? You know the kind of service and the quality that the citizens get just from that alone? We took that on, and then we got, we're cut now be, by, we're below what we were at before we added those people. And we're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. That's what's happening. And I want to fix that. I want to change that. But I want to do it fiscally responsibly. I do. And maybe some people don't think that that's the case. But NFPA standard says we're supposed to have four in every ring. I'd have to double the budget. I'd have to go to $16 million to get that to happen. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for you know, a little compromise. I'm asking for some additional staff to get our daily minimums up so that we have more people on the scene and we can cover and take care of more things sooner than later. And I'm not I'm doom and gloom. There isn't anything we can't do. Fire department can do anything. We've proven it time and time again, day in, day out, every year. And the reason nothing's happened is because of the staff that we have and the leadership I have and because of the people that work for us. That's what's going on. So. That's just my, again, that's my personal opinion. Can I back it up with scientific evidence? I can somewhat. You know, with runs, we, we submitted three years' worth of runs. Every single run was analyzed all together as to the areas, as to the response times, as to the number of people that were there. One unit, two units, that was all done. And I have scientific proof that says if we go from five to four stations or less, response times will suffer. That's why we're doing it. And, and Wally Ensley, he's a driver. He's retired. He doesn't live in the city. And um, he wrote, he gave you that letter. And I answered, there were 15 inaccuracies in that letter, and I addressed every one of them, why they were wrong and where that he was either using in, incorrect statistics or he was talking about something that he knew at a driver's level, but he doesn't know at the chief's level or the assistance level or the deputy's level or the battalion chief's level or the captain's level or the lieutenant's level. He's a driver. You know, if I put him up in an admin for a, on a 40-hour week and gave him, you know, my deputy chief's job, he'd go nuts. He'd, he'd quit. Give him five minutes, he'd be done. That's my personal opinion. I'm sorry, but it is. So I, I, I can't even entertain that. I can't even entertain that. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Alderman Holshue. Thank you. I have a number of points I want to make. Ooh. Surprise, right? Hey. First of all, we have to take in consideration how we are rebuilding the city. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need more firefighters and I believe more <coughs> police department to make sure that our public safety is met. So to think that we can run on the same budget we've been running on for seven years moving forward, we're stifling ourselves, and I don't think we're being fair to our residents. That's the first point I want to make. I think that at the time we are now that we have, they're doing a fabulous job, but they're overworked. We have people doing jobs of other people that how do they get a clear, clear sight into the exact jobs they're supposed to be doing, our EMS, et cetera. I think I personally am offended that those three firefighters that we fought so hard for were never appointed. 
when they should have been. So I'm, I'm still a little salty about that. Um, and another point in that, on the south side that I represent, my constituents, we have a fire station that has two firemen in it. We also have two chemical companies and a power plant and a railroad track that cuts between us. So I think the more firefighters we have, the more safety we have in, in our city. And to think otherwise, I think, is um, convoluted. I have two questions. One, did our city not have a study done when we took the ambulance service on before we took the ambulance? Didn't we have, I can't remember if we had a study done on our fire department and our ambulance service. I couldn't remember. So I'd like to know if we did or not. And then my other question is, when we're talking about the collection for the ambulance fees, I guess I think that's a finance issue and not a fire department issue. The fire department is there to provide public safety and protection. They're not there to be bill collectors. I would think that should go to the fire or the finance department to handle that, that particular element of the ambulance. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Hey, uh, on treasure. What I have to say has little to do with what the chief said, but a lot to do with what the chief said. When you're on the receiving end, of having firefighters come because your house is on fire, which I had. And when you're on the receiving end of having a medical emergency in your house and having the firefighters come, both times under three minutes. My husband was in a diabetic, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, but he was totally out of it, unconscious, never seen anything like it before. I thought the man was going to die. If it wasn't for the firefighters, they're the ones that brought him back. Three minutes they were there. I want to know that when my house is burning or if I have a medical emergency and I can taste the smoke in my house, I want to know that we have men like this to come and handle the situation and not two that have to wait for a third, but a third that comes with the rig. And that's all I have to say. I just want to say very quickly, Chief Romas, thank you for putting this together. I think this is something that we would look forward to every year to reviewing and, and much as we're doing with strategic planning, just to kind of, you know, where we're at. Um, we haven't had that, but I think that this is a, a big deal and it's comprehensive and between this and what the union has provided, it really helps. And, and serving a public uh, protection, I, I really appreciate that. I just want to say thank you. So. <clears throat> Any other questions? Well, um, since this is only on for discussion and it's a master plan, um, Alderman Steele, is this something that's going to go back to, to, to go back? Is he going to present that in a resolution form? Or is there something that our, our Again, we hear about plans, we have incentives, we, and, and we're trying to accomplish things in the city of Sheboygan. Um, what happens with this plan next? It was currently just for discussion. It was a plan for discussion. It was not a resolution that needed to be voted on. So it, unless it comes as a resolution, there's nothing to be voted on. Alderman Herman. I just want to uh, reiterate and concur with Alderman Trester. I've thought about this uh, for quite a long time. Um, I concur with Chief Ruamas' plan. I want my apartments, my fellow tenants' apartments, my friends' family members' homes to be as safe as possible. And this plan will ensure that that happens. Uh, I don't think we can ever put a price on human life. <laughs> Um, I think that we need to keep our fire department as strong as possible into the future, and this will do that long after Chief Romas has departed. Uh, this is going to protect us 8, 10, 12, 15 years down the road. I think it's a sensible plan, uh, and I support this 100%. Um, it's it's not a perfect plan, but there is no such thing as a perfect plan, but it has to be done. We have to ask ourselves, what do we want? Do we want our fire department to be, remain up here, or do we want it to go down a few notches? Naturally, we want it to stay where it is, 
it's always been outstanding. I mean, my family has served in the fire department, uh, two, family, uh, two family members, two relatives. Michael Herb served for over 30 years. My cousin Jeff served for a long time. So I have the utmost respect and admiration for the fire department. And it's always been important to me to keep it where it's at even before I joined the council. I was always keeping track of how the fire department was being looked at by the council and being taken care of. And I want this plan to pass. And I thank Chief Romas for this. Thank you. Thank you Is there any other discussion, any other questions to the chief? How do we Sorry. implement this? Again, that's what I, that's why I had uh, public protection and safety. Um, I would think that it would have to come back to the council in, res in uh, resolution form. Alderman Bourne. Uh, we're, I was going to ask Alderman Bellinger where his uh, proposal is to have the outside study. I know there was a number of proposals. Where is that in the pipeline right now? Um, uh, currently, the, what I know, I'm working with um, uh, the purchasing uh, director, and uh, he's going to be getting some back. Alderman Bellinger. Um, as far as I know, there's going to be a committee of the whole meeting yep. on the 21st, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And there will be um, an individual here from Fitch and Associates who um, management um, has deemed the uh, preferred vendor, the consultant that they would like to have uh, provide this study. They're going to, or this individual is going to come here, present uh, what he has and answer any questions. and. Um, you know, that will be, at, at that point in time, there would be a vote whether the council wants to, once they hear all the information, ask all their questions, get them answered to, you know, their satisfaction, um, then there would be a vote to either proceed and, and move forward and, and fund the stu study or not. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman Bourne. Uh, well, procedurally, I think it would be a good idea to have that gentleman come in and then based on that, whether we go ahead with that survey or not, uh, I would also like to hear a rebuttal from the union as on this 2020 plan to see if they're in, if they're in support of it because I, I thought the first, their first thing was very well done, but I'd like to get their opinion. So somewhere along the line, I'd maybe like to give Mr. Longwiller a chance uh, to talk about this 2020 plan, what, what he envisions it, if, 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 if his people agree with it. But I think uh, before I would feel comfortable on voting on the union plan, the chief's plan, I would like to have hear what that consultant has to say and then at that time decide which way we're going to go. Okay, thank you. And that will be coming on 21st. Alderman Donahue. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, Chief, I thank you for your plan. We waited a very long time for it. Um, and I appreciate the information that you provided. Um, I think Appendix D was probably the most salient document for us to look at. I also appreciated the comparison with other somewhat similarly situated uh, municipalities, uh, which indicates to me that we're um, actually doing really quite well as we position ourselves in terms of uh, staffing and uh, station location and so forth. Um, I don't think we can hold, adopt this plan with all of its staffing contingencies through 2020 outside of any regular budget process. So I don't think that a resolution to approve this entire plan makes a great deal of sense at this point. Um, I am personally glad that we have added back in three firefighters and a battalion chief. Uh, I think that really gets us back um, in a much more friendly neighborhood in terms of, of staffing and so forth. Um, I think we would need to look long and hard at whether and to what extent and how need driven it would be to simply <coughs> increase all of these positions. As I look at the, the municipality comparisons and of course we've got apples to oranges here so it's a little hard to say um, it really looks like none of these departments really complies with the National Fire Protection uh, Safety Standards uh, completely. 
Uh, and I think probably in part that's because that would be a very, very, very expensive proposition, particularly in, a munis in municipalities where firefighting is fighting fires, addressing fires, thankfully, is becoming a smaller and smaller and smaller part of, a, of the uh, percentage of, of what our firefighters do. So I think we need to be proactive. We need to look at this in more detail. Um, because there's so much money involved and because, as several alders have spoken, the safety of our citizens is so important, I really think having a more comprehensive look that will allow us to balance the comprehensive proposal that the union gave us with, you know, with another, again, in-depth kind of study would be helpful. I'm still thinking, I think the case for five fire stations is probably pretty compelling. Um, on the other hand, there may be a possibility of, of relocating, um, of relocating in an even more important way, given where population density is going to be and so forth. Um, I, th I, I just, I think we need some guidance on that uh, beyond this, this four-page or three-page document. Um, so again, I, I do thank the Chief. I think all of our intentions here in this room are really good. Um, we're all looking for safety and a beneficial use of taxpayers' dollars, kind of balancing that out. And I think many of, it, of us in this room have been in that position where there's probably no, nobody in the world that you've ever been happier to see than that ambulance or fire truck coming up to your house. I think all of us have probably had some one experience like that or another or know somebody who has. Um, and those are powerful experiences. They're, and they're certainly a part of what we think about, but we have sort of a greater a greater responsibility, I think, to, to look at a, at a fuller picture. So, um, I think, and I think we can do that. I, I think this is all, I think this is all within within our purview, and I think we can uh, that we can move forward um, to to just adopt the chief's plan wholesale. I can't support at this point, um, and, and I, I, I do think we need to take another look at it. So. Um, with that, I do thank the Chief for, for having put this information together for us. Alderman Holshu, and then Alderman. What, I, what <coughs> I think I'd like to do is then, if we're meeting on the 21st, hold this until right. the 21st and invite Chase to that meeting as well to discuss and answer any questions we have. He may have. Oh, on why we consider whether or not they're going to spend the $60,000 for the other survey and to maybe have the um, union input, as, as Alderman Bourne had said, on, on the chief's plan. But then we can ask questions of the chief, of the union, and these new people that are doing their study. Well, I don't think that really is relevant because they, they're just doing the study. They aren't fire department. So I'm going to make a motion to hold this till the 21st. Sure. It can be discussed again. Uh, well, there's, there is no action we have to take on this at all. No, but I'd like to have it re-brought <coughs> forward on the 21st. And I can put that in a note, and I'll make sure that it's done. Okay, thank you. Okay. Alderman Tresser, then Alderman Warren. One of the things that I learned from being a council member is that each one of us are gifted in our own special ways, we're each on a committee, and each committee on this council is asked to do a certain job. None of us can be at every, co every committee meeting, and we have to assume, maybe assume is not the right word, but we have to trust and have faith in the individual committees that when they come up with a report or recommendation, that we have to believe that the people at the top know what they're doing a whole lot better than we do. And I guess um, the chief has been a fire chief for a long time. He's been connected with the fire department for a long time. 
And I'm sure that there isn't any one of us in this room that knows more about firefighting than our chief. And I think if he feels that this report that he gave us is his best, then I don't feel we need to spend $60,000 on another report that is going to use the same uh, uh no, I've lost the word. Uh, the union has special um, qualifications and you have to have certain standards. And the union report has those standards. The report was given to us. The chief is using those standards with the report he's given us. And I just don't see why we need to spend an extra $60,000 using the same standards to get more information. I think if we can't trust the man at the top to do his job, to do it well, and to do it in a way that's safe for the city of Sheboygan, then why is he our fire chief? Thank you. Uh, Alderman Bourne. Uh, chief, I was wondering, uh, the cities that you use for the comparison here, <clears throat> I'm wondering if it would be possible to get some data on Manitowoc, and the reason I'm asking that, I'd be interested to see what their square miles, I don't think they have as many people as Sheboygan, but also it would be a like city as far as they got the lake on the east just like we do, and it would give us maybe a, a little, I think it would give us a, you know, some interesting information, not to say that your other cities don't, but Manitowoc is kind of like us because it's got the lake. Right, they're much smaller than us. Their area is bigger, um, and uh, their square mileage is bigger. They have fewer runs, and they're just a smaller community. And they have an ambulance. Sure. They have an ambulance service too, right? They do. Yes. If you could kind of fill in the blanks on Manitowoc, I'd appreciate it. Sure, can do. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, just, to, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to respond to Alderman Trezor. Uh, the idea and. Uh, and coming to committee meetings and having a committee of the whole to examine ideas, that's what's most important for Alderman to do. And, and if we decide that all of a sudden we're going to, uh, you know, he did a phenomenal job of, of putting this presentation together, the plan looked good, but I think we, we just can't stop there. We need, and I guess, and I'm not saying I'm going to vote in favor of having an of the department or not, but I'm not, uh, I want to I see that presentation. I want to have that information given to me so that I can make a very good dis the decision. And that's the responsibility of an alderman. So I don't, there's not anything that's going to be decided. It's just something that we need, more, we need more information to help us make a better decision. That's where I go from that. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Chairman. Um, since Chase is here, if he does have any comments about the proposal, could we open the floor to him to, since he's here tonight to at least hear what he has to say? If you have any, I don't know if you do I, yet. Or. I don't mind. No. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Chase. Um, <coughs> you don't have to have a motion on it, do you? <laughs> feet are cold. My feet are cold. On the spot. <coughs> uh, I don't really have any uh, re prepared statement on the Chief's plan. Uh, to Alderperson Bourne's suggestion that maybe the local could put something together and Give us, give everyone our two cents. I'd be more than happy to do that in a prepared fashion, especially on the 21st. Um, but I hate to just jump in and, you know, a lot of what he said, especially when it comes to adding those manpower, is things that we've even commented in our study that was done by the uh, International. So sort of what this chief said was, in the end game, no matter how you get there, at some point we need to look at for the community, for the entire, for our infrastructure, increasing the staffing in certain areas of the city <coughs> so that the north side, the far south side, which were the two recommendations we originally made, so that people on the far south side and people on the far so uh, north side are getting the, uh, a truck company with three people right away because without that third person, we cannot make entry to perform life-saving rescues or begin firefighting, interior firefighting, to prevent damage to the homes and uh, life safety. And, you know, we think about homes and we talk about our houses and we look at our families, but we also have to go above and beyond that as we look at this community. Because as we build this community with um, more jobs that are coming in, new uh, businesses, we need to have the firefighters there to protect these businesses. 
without, when a business sustains major damage, sometimes that business isn't as likely to maybe rebuild. They may move on, they may go somewhere else. So we need to have firefighting efforts that can go out there, uh, take care of the businesses, focus on maintaining the safety for our residents across the board. And real quickly, just uh, if you don't mind, just because Alderman Bourne had asked the chief a question, when you think about two rivers in that comparison, or uh, <coughs> Manitowoc, remember Manitowoc is you know 38,000 people, it's a smaller community. Yes, they run the ambulance service. They are also bordered by a, a full-time fire department in the Two Rivers Fire Department. They have a full-time fire department right across the river that does mutual aid and responds, who also runs a full-time ambulance service. So you have a full-time fire department balancing off another full-time fire department when you try to compare the two cities. So it's something I'm sure he could put together for you, but when I heard you say that just off the top of my head, that's the first thing I thought of when I think of Two Rivers in Manitowoc two communities that are feeding off that are full-time municipal firefighters. Okay, thank you. So. Alderman Schneider, do you have something for uh, Just, I guess, more or less, to give you guys some direction. If it were up to me, I mean, we have a report from the chief. We have a report from the union. Uh, you guys can comb through that and find your similar recommendations and the points that where maybe you have differences of opinion or contradictions, right? Yeah, I mean, I've told the chief, I have a lot of different ideas and some thought processes that are different, but when you look at the actual study that we did, you know, brass tacks is that the NFPA is the NFPA. And when you look at the distance, um, like um, Alder President Donahue talked about with the, uh, the firehouses where they're located, mileage is the same, GIS is the same. That's all, anybody who does their studies correctly, their GIS studies and their population and taking the 3,000 or the three years worth of almost 15,000 runs that were inputted into those computers, if they come out any differently, there's something weird going on. Um, but yes, I, absolutely, I have no problem sitting down and going through our document, working with the chief on his long-range plan to come up with the best thing that we can present to you. Uh, as the local has always said, we've also tried to work with the community, I think talking to our HR department, we've always tried to do our best to be physically, uh, fiscally responsible and provide the best plans to our management um, to help get the most guys on the rigs and uh, that uh, will move the department in a forward direction as this community grows. So, and that's all I want to see is, as a department and this whole community is continuing to grow is move forward. So. Thank you. Any okay. other questions? Okay. Any, any other? Uh, okay. Alderman yeah, I guess I'm just trying to, you know, make it easy for you guys. And I mean, so we have, two different groups examining this, right? You have a chief in, in the union looking at this. You're going to have a lot of similarities. You guys know the city. You know the job. You know the tasks. And you're going to have probably pretty similar recommendations on a lot of the things. But I guess just for me or for the PPNS, you know, you're going to want to solidify and on the things you contradict is give a recommendation as a whole. I would be happy. I don't want to step on the chief's toes. You know, he's the administrative leader of this of our department, uh, the union, you know, I, I, I'm not there to submit a plan per se, but I'd be more than happy to always work with the chief and give a, I, I've always have given him our input, but you're right, there's a lot in our two plans that I'd be more than happy to sit down and comb through it and even come back with another uh, thought process from us to give to you, to all of you to think about and that maybe he and I can uh, tinker with, like you said, uh, take those two, two points together. A lot of what is in his plan really came right out of the uh, IFF's plan. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Holshu, I'm sorry. <laughs> so Lynn, on the 21st, we're going to hear from the union and we're going to, and the chief, and you're going to work together to give us one plan. Is that possible or you can't do that? I'll do whatever you guys want. Well, I'm going to make, make a it recommendation better. that the union and the exactly. chief, the That's department enough. head, sit down, work together, okay. put your heads together, and bring it to us. Absolutely. That, on the 21st. That, that would be on the 21st, along Alderman Bellinger. Yeah, thank you. I, I just have a, a concern with, with Alderman Donahue's previous point. Um, shouldn't this be a budgetary thing? I mean, when you're talking about, you know, long-term planning, adding roughly 600000 or 500 whatever it is, I mean, it's a significant budget impact. Um, you know, is it going to be a document that we would adopt and, you know, or does this need to go, what is the correct form that they should come back as far as, you know, moving forward with something like this, you know, rather than having them do all this work and put something together and come find out that it should, you know, be in a budgetary process or some other format. I'm just wondering what the correct 
format should be or process that they should take to move forward. You, you know, you're absolutely correct. There's going to be huge, you know, fiscal impacts. Um, similar to, I guess, the strategic plan, it, you know, the plan that the fire chief uh, presented is, is in fact just a plan. It will be used by him uh, in his presentation of the 2018 budget uh, and 19 uh, going forward. Uh, the public protection and safety, you know, will take that under consideration in light of <coughs> The plan, if the council should approve it, but uh, you know, a group like this can be the whole, and ultimately, you acting in, in your role as a common council, you know, will have to prioritize this as it relates to all other, you know, city operations. Uh, everyone in this room is aware that we do have expenditure restraint program, which uh, in the past has been a driving force, uh, simply because if we go over. We lose roughly seven hundred thousand uh, dollars, so that's something that uh, you know will be, will have to be thrown into the mix um, because if if the chief is successful in getting his additional people, that really means we have to s probably subtract three or four sta existing staff uh, simply because the budget is that tight. Uh, so again, uh, my sense is you know should the council approve this his plan, it is you know as we heard. Earlier tonight, strategic plan is just a plan. His is ultimately a plan as well, uh, and ultimately the council will, will make the, the, the budgetary decisions as, as best as they can. Okay. Any other questions? Alderman Donahue. And I'd just like to reiterate that. I mean, I think we need to be very careful that we're not coming into a meeting on the 21st which is an odd configuration when we are giving, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but we are privileging, we're essentially equating worker and management parts of the fire department. And we are consciously transforming or transferring rather certain planning pieces to to the firefighters, and I appreciate Alder Holshue's um, desire that they work together, and I think that's an excellent plan. Um, but I think we need to be very, <laughs> I think we just need to be very careful here about how we proceed. And, um, and so I, I appreciate the city administrator's reminder to all of us that we cannot be planning for specific budgetary commitments three years into the future on the basis of just a couple of meetings. So I think we really need to look at that in more detail. And obviously we'll have the opportunity to talk about this on the 21st, but I think having more information is going to be more helpful to us than having less information. So I just, that's just a cautionary piece that I'm, I'm feeling here that we're not plowing ahead and <coughs> adopting this plan as, as our budgetary uh, uh, roadmap. Thank you. Alderman Holshu. I guess I just want to refer to our five-year strategic plan on, on page four where it says teamwork. I'd like to see that the union and the chief can sit down together. They both have their different ideas. Come up with one, one thing that might be beneficial to us. And I don't know what hiring another company to take a look at this is any different. I mean, is that not a budgetary problem um, that we're spending $60,000 with them to take a look at it and we're going to be making it a, um, a vote on what they might say? So I, I just don't, I don't think it's any different. And, and I'm looking forward to hearing what our firefighters as a group are thinking about what we can do moving forward more so than a company that isn't a firefighting group at all. They're just, uh, they just look at different things. Okay, thank you. Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> I guess, uh, you know, I don't like spending 50000 or 60000 or whatever it's going to cost, but at the end of the day, after we hear this guy's presentation and if we decide to go ahead with it, a $60,000 expenditure May, may in the long run save us a couple hundred thousand dollars on better ways to do things in that department. And I, I would think next year, Daryl, with your uh, priority-based budgeting, 
what you were saying before that if we add if we add three firefighters and uh, another management person, uh, what is, what are the other four people in with the with your expenditure restraint? What are where are the other four people going to come from uh, in city government that we possibly have to lay off to do that? So, with your priority based budgeting next year, I hope that gives us some answers. Uh, and, and I mean, that's very important. I mean, if we're going to have to lay off four people to do what we want to do in the fire department, then, you know, we've got to, we've got to be very careful there, too. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is really doesn't have anything to do with the fire department, but I remember sitting in fiscal planning and we were talking about we have these budgetary restriction restraints. We were going to talk about the other side of that if we didn't have those budgetary restraints and we've never talked about it we were I was told Alderman Donahue told me that we were we would take we would be taking a good look at that and I don't remember there being one conversation about it yet so as we look at budgetary restrictions I'm not saying we should do that but it certainly would be nice to have the um, the topic Entertained. I'd like to hear what what would happen if we didn't go with that budgetary restriction program, and we did go. I'd like to know what those choices are instead of um, maybe maybe we need to look at that too. Budget the budget restrictions keeps us in the same place year after year after year after year after year because we have to be within those restraints. I want to know what can we do when we don't need those restraints. I know that there's money given by the state. The 700,000, but are there other ideas? I don't know. I'd like to know. So I don't know where that comes in, <coughs> but I'd really like to know, and, and, and as, as was told to me, that we would entertain discussions, and we've yet to do that. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Donahue. Our entire budget process has been about looking at those alternatives. We can look at what we would do without $700,000. Um, we spent a considerable period of time looking at the budget proposals made by each department, the thorough and considered opinions of the management of each of those departments. Those are the kinds of things that we look at in terms of a budget and we have done that and will continue to do it. Somehow our communication wasn't as good as it could have been this time but you know we can continue to work on that but expenditure restraint was enacted by the current state government our our current governor and legislature to make sure that municipalities live on an extremely tight budget and so we can increase we don't have to, I mean, we don't have to participate in expenditure restraints, but then we need to find $700,000 that we can take away from our budget. And we still can't increase the tax rate, the, the levy rate, except for net new construction. So we are in a very tight position, and we can dream all we want, and I think that's that's good, but we have talked about these things. And... Uh, and I think if, if we're really going to go down to a zero-based kind of consideration, in other words, we're going to act, we're going to consider the budget as if we don't have expenditure restraints. We're going to look at the budget as if we don't have um, uh, limits on what we can, uh, to the extent that we can increase the tax levy. I think we can do those things, but then I think we need to come down to earth and say, what is it that we're going to stop doing? Our, you know, and, and, and we can certainly have those discussions. Um, Priority-based budgeting is a very good way to do that. The county has done it. What they have found is that the things that they have been doing are, by and large, of extremely high priority. And I think by and large, the things that we do, we feel, are extremely high priority. So, so we have had those discussions. We can contextualize it or put it in a in a context that is more more of a 
what if kind of scenario. So what if we didn't have expenditure restraints, we didn't have restrictions on, 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 on the tax levy rate, but you know, I, it, it, it seems to me that we sort of have done that and that we all are basically on the same page that what we do is all the things that we do provide are, are high priorities. So, um, you know, we, we could do that. I mean, you know, we certainly can. Um, I'm just, <laughs> unless we're really willing to shake up, you know, what it is. I mean, we can just get rid of city parks. We can save 700 grand. We don't have to have parks. We don't have to maintain the beaches. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to do leaf pickup. We don't have to plant new trees. Um, um, you know, there are all sorts <coughs> of things that we can do, so. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, again, I, and I like to hear the discussion I, more than anybody, probably. But let, if we're gonna, we've got another. If you're going to ask something or have a question of the chief and the plan that was before us, that's what that's the issue that's before us. So, if there's any other questions to the chief or uh, Chase or any other comments about the chief's plan, okay, seeing none, we're going to go to item two three. The discussion on procedure for submitting documents to the Common Council. Um, now I put this on here because I went and I talked to um, uh, the city attorney. And w one of the things that, that, that I found, and it, it seemed to happen more and more at committee level, that there are documents coming to committee with one signature and basically you're... Uh, it's, it's either one person's one uh, idea or it's coming from Daryl or it's coming from staff. And what I would li like to do is I'd like to have more than one person sign on that document. Now, uh, the attorney has not gotten back to me whether that is legal or not. Okay, so once I find that out, but what, I w what I'd like you, would encourage you to do, to give me some ideas of what you would think, as aldermen, would be proper in getting documents back to your committees or to the Common Council as a whole. Because I think far too often there's, there, there's maybe uh, just one person's idea or, or a, a situation where the rest of the committee members don't get enough information about what's coming to their committees because they haven't seen the document ahead of time. And I guess I'm trying to uh, increase some in, uh, information. Alderman Donahue. I think for uh, resolutions that are generated uh, by alders, uh, the more signatures that a resolution or proposed ordinance has, the better, because it shows that there's more support for it. I think the vast majority of what we get is staff driven, and because of the somewhat arcane rules that this council follows, an alder has to sign on to something. So, um, I mean, I. The documents, by and large, that all of us need with board docs now are totally available to us before a meeting. And I don't think having two alder signatures on a resolution about, for example, um, uh, the stop loss carrier that the city is going, to, is going to employ for the next year is something that needs two signatures. So I, from a practical perspective, I think Alder generated resolutions, the more signatures, the better. Otherwise, are we going to slow things down even more? We have this, you know, something comes in and then, you know, we get to look at it at a council meeting and all those attachments are there. Then it gets referred to a committee and we can refer, review all the attachments there. Then it gets referred back. I mean, it's just a, we kind of stumble on our procedure. I think we should be trying to streamline rather than complicate. Uh, Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we discussed this briefly at the staff meeting this morning, and City Attorney Charles Adams said that uh, normally when a, a document is, uh, is, is drafted, his office takes care of that, and what they'll do is they'll call what they feel is the appropriate person based on the committee structure and ask them if they can use their name to submit this. And, um, I mean, you see, all we're going to have to do then is, is call two people to get that same permission. So, I mean, he can certainly do that, and, uh, and he's involved with drafting all the documents, and he makes sure that they're uh, done, done appropriately before they go to the city clerk's office. I, I understand the everyday normal operation from staff. I'm talking about any additional item that we brought 
to the Common Council or to the committee because it's that person's idea and there wasn't anybody else in that committee that bought onto that idea. But yet that, that idea came to a committee with that one person's signature on it. And I, I can remember having a conversation with uh, uh, Attorney Adams and he said, you know, Joe, if you come up with an idea, make sure somebody else goes along with that idea. Sure. Sure. Well, I, I, can, give you, I can give you, for instance, an idea that came to salary and grievance that didn't have anybody else's signature on it. That wasn't my idea. But again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to increase the amount of communication between committee members and having more people involved in our city government than just one, just the chairman of that committee or just that one single alderman. Okay, so that's if, you, if you've got some um, suggestions to me, please email me. I'd appreciate that. Um, I'm open to any, any type of um, comments or suggestions, but I'm going to be working on something to come to the Common Council. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one suggestion I would make is that uh, rather than just the chairman of a committee's name being on the document, it would take one more phone call by whoever to get the vice chairman of the committee on that. Uh, you know, I know, I know sometimes uh, being vice chairman of the finance committee, uh, I'm not privy to really what's going on, and it would be nice to have some advance notification sometime of what's coming down the pike. And uh, one thing I've noticed on certain committees, one that I'm on is public works. Once, once in a while we'll get a, a phantom agenda item for discussion and there's really no document with it. It would be nice, it would be nice in advance if that would come through on a document that uh, it goes through council and then it gets referred to that committee so that the public, whoever else wants to see what's on the agenda, that these phantom things just don't show up on the agenda without going through the council first. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Answer. Okay, uh, there's no uh, document or anything with that. So I would entertain, uh, um, well, you know, our, our next committee of the whole meeting will be December 21st. Okay, so put that on your calendars. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. thank you very much. Aye.